All right, cool. Hi, everybody. I'm Rindy Portfolio. Uh, I blog erratically at rindyportfolio.com, and I have been using WordPress for a while. Um, I help out at Tadpole Collective, so you usually see me in the help desk room here. Instead of up here, I rarely get to see the presentations except on video. But uh, we always have a good time back there. And um, today I thought we'd talk about user taxonomies. So we had this project that we started. Um, we just delivered it uh, about six months ago or so. And uh, we started working on it around late, Two ago. late 2012. <laughs> just feels that way. Right? <laughs> Where uh, and I've already published this entire presentation at tadpole.cc, uh, so I'm going to be basing this off of what I've written up here and uh, the code that I published on GitHub. Uh, just let me know if you have any question or if you can't hear me too well. So we had a client, um, we have a client, Arts Westchester. They do some great work up in Westchester County for the arts. And they came to us and uh, they wanted us to rebuild their website. They had a few uh, requirements. Basically, the site is um, a repository or a directory of, of users. It has two kinds of users. There are artists and there are cultural organizations. Everybody, every user has their own page. It displays their blog posts, uh, some events that, that they've created, uh, and a bio or some kind of statement. There are some other custom fields in there. Um, the profiles are slightly different depending on what type of user you are. Um, the site displays users in two directories, each with their own category. So we have um, the artist directory and we have the cultural organizations directory. We've got different categories or sets of categories, uh, what we call taxonomies, for artists and for cultural organizations. <coughs> so. Uh, the site is at artswestchester.org if you want to peruse it. But basically, there's some screenshots here showing you um, there are two menu items, cultural org directory, artist directory. Um, the artist directory looks like this. We show an icon for each category. Uh, we have these icons for the cultural organizations directory, different categories uh, there. And then when you click into a certain category, you'll see a list of profiles associated with that category. So here we see artists listed under literary. Here we see cultural organizations listed under galleries. And then when you click on individual profiles, you'll see, for example, an artist profile or a cultural organization profile. Each pulls in different fields depending on who they might be. So, You've probably noticed the pattern here, which is that these category pages are they're really similar to like a WordPress category archive page. Um, the directory pages are like a page that lists all of the terms in your categories. Uh, so if you are, are all of your categories on, on a single page, you know. Uh, the only difference is that we're we're not categorizing posts, we're categorizing users. So it's a little bit of a twist. Um, so is that weird? Yeah. But WordPress provides a way for us to do this. In, in WordPress way of thinking, posts and users are both just objects. You know, they're just things that are defined, which have certain qualities and which you can do things with. As developers, you know, to use the technical term, you can do stuff with them, like assign them to categories and list them all out on a page. So, I'm going to assume that everybody here knows what taxonomies are, but you know, for those people who are watching this on video later, <laughs> categories and tags have a fancy name, taxonomy. Uh, it sounds like scientific, right? It's the way that people classify things. Uh, you know, all human life has been categorized with various taxonomies. Uh, we have, um, or maybe a single taxonomy on that one. I'm not really a scientist. <laughs> So it's just basically a way to organize things. So category is technically a taxonomy. Tags are a taxonomy. All of your tags are terms within the taxonomy called tags. All of your categories are terms within the taxonomy called categories. So you might make like a food blog, for example. You could create a taxonomy called meals or meal 
And then the terms in there would be breakfast, lunch, dinner. Or you would have a taxonomy called ingredients where you created um, terms such as sugar, flour, and wheat. So what we decided for this project was to create a custom taxonomy that we would apply to the user object as opposed to the post object. So it's not that straightforward because it's easy to set up a custom taxonomy for posts, but it's a, you have to do a, a few workarounds in order to get it working for users. But before we go into why we did this, let's talk about um, a couple other things that we didn't choose to do. One of the things we kicked around was maybe this is a BuddyPress site. So if you don't know, BuddyPress is like social media in a box. You can create your own awesome social media website using BuddyPress. You get all sorts of immediate great features like forums and groups and user profiles. And there's a lot of overlapping functionality there. But ultimately, we decided that this was too much for the project because we, we weren't really going to have users associating with one another on their own, the way that you do with social media. So there weren't going to be user-created groups. There weren't going to have any messaging or forum capabilities. Um, so we thought that this would just add too much um, extra code to the, to the site. We thought about multi-site. And actually, the site is multi-site, although it's not really relevant to the presentation. We thought about, though, having each user would create their own website, like WordPress.com. Um, but really, that wasn't necessary. Um, it's not necessary to give you a whole site just so that you can have a blog, or just so that you can post to the blog of a website. Um, and then we, we, we also knew that some users were not going to be given permissions to blog. So then how would that work if they had their own website? Um, plus, we thought there are going to be thousands of users and um, in fact, the site already had thousands of users. We weren't just dreaming that this was going to happen. It really was, really was true. And uh, we said multi-site is going to be too complex. Um, one other thing we thought of very briefly was custom post types, where we'd create post types called artists and cultural orgs. But this never was really going to work, because we really wanted user functionality. People had to log in, and they had to be able to post or um, you know, create an event, for example. And WordPress just gives you too much off the ground if this is a user object. It makes a lot more sense. So it gave us the flexibility to divide users into categories and build archive pages to display them in directories. We work with the user object so that people could create accounts and have logins, be assigned to roles, publish blog posts, or not, just in the traditional manner of WordPress. So like a lot of WordPress projects before this one, it started with a Justin Tadlock tutorial. And he wrote this post in October 2011. So it's like a really long time ago, right? Now, granted, we were starting this project in late 2012, so it was a little bit more fresh then. But you know, it's still relevant today. What he's talking about here is some of the things I've just covered. What are objects in WordPress besides posts and users? Comments and links are also objects. Um, he goes through a whole bunch of things here, and there are multiple snippets on this page um, explaining lots of different things about how to set these up. So for example, I'm just going to take you through the abbreviated version here. We, we register the taxonomy against the user object. We use register taxonomy. This is the same as when you create uh, the custom taxonomies we're all used to that apply to posts. Uh, within register taxonomy, normally right here it would say post, but instead we're saying user to attach it to the user. Then we have to do a, a few things that help us clean up what uh, WordPress hasn't put there. Uh, out of the box. So we need to correct the term update count mechanism. Um, thanks to Justin Tadlock for explaining this, because I probably would not have picked up on it. But basically, WordPress is only internally going to update the number of posts in your term when it's applied to posts. When you do this for users, it, it doesn't know what you're talking about. So we create a little function so that we fill that gap. 
um, we need to create the manage terms page. So just like where you manage your uh, category terms or your tag terms or your custom taxonomy terms, we have to create that page ourselves so that you can manage your user uh, taxonomy. And then create the mechanism to assign terms to users and to save those terms. So all of this sounds really complicated, and in fact it is. It's above my pay grade, but luckily, like with so many other WordPress things, people have been there and done it. So we were researching on Tadlock's article, and we were uh, doing more searching. This uh, developer, Damien Gostomsky, had taken all the missing, so-called missing core functions that we were looking for, rolled them all up into a class, and created a plugin out of it. The plugin now, fair warning, hasn't been updated in a couple of years, so it's getting that warning bug on the, on the repository. But um, we didn't use that plugin. We just used the class that he built, and we created our own plugin, and this is working fine <coughs> all the way up to 383. OK, so this is a single file, this plugin, and we've got it stored right here. So all of this is linked, again, from the blog post on Tadpole CC if you want to dig into this code, basically. Uh, that's not the... It's down a bit. Yeah, it's down a bit. There are a few files in here. It's like the last one. Is it the last one? That one. Right, OK. This is hard to look. OK. I don't know. Hmm? How's that? Yeah. Better? Okay. So we, uh, we, know we have our props out to our developers who did all the hard work ahead of us here. And basically we register our artist taxonomy here. This looks exactly the same as when you register a custom tax for uh, posts, but like I said, we're applying it to the user object. We have another taxonomy here called teaching artists. We have another one for cultural organizations. So these are three taxonomies that we registered. Artist, teaching artists, which is a different type of artist, and cultural organizations. I'm leaving a lot of complexity out of this project, <laughs> by the way. OK, and then this is the class that the other developer uh, created for us, which really rolled everything up nicely. Um, it registers hooks and filters we can in advance. It helps us to arrange those pages that we were talking about, to update the number of users for a taxonomy term, like we mentioned. So all this stuff is just ready to go. Adding taxonomies to the user menu. It has it fixes little weird things like um, when you were originally doing it, you'd be clicked into hosts. Uh, you'd be clicked into editing your um, sorry your your user taxonomy. But on the left side menu, you know, usually it shows you where you are. It was highlighting posts because you're editing a taxonomy. So this little uh, snippet will fix it so that it's highlighting users so that it makes more sense. It's just those little things that you know, were overlooked because no one ever, when they were building WordPress, nobody thought of, let's categorize users. Um, that's what makes it great. You can plug in and, and do something else with it. Okay? So you can go through this at your leisure. There's a lot here, and um, we, we don't want to cover everything. But this, this one, for example, sets up the back and screen where you would edit your um, users by adding them to different terms. OK. And in Justin's article, he explained a lot of how that functionality works. So I'm just going to move on to theme files. So we mainly need three files in the theme in order to display this stuff. The author PHP is your standard authored PHP. It's been in every default theme since 2010. It's normally like when you are reading a blog and it says, uh, you can click on the author's name, and you end up on that page. It shows all of their blog posts uh, out of the box. We're going to do a little bit more with it so that we can show different custom fields and stuff. In the um, taxonomy, taxonomy PHP, that taxonomy represents the name of the taxonomy. So for us, we're using taxonomy artist and taxonomy cultural org. 
those are the names of our uh, categories and the page, uh, those are the names of our taxonomies. And those files are gonna build a page like this one where we list all of the folks in a single term. We'll give that a minute. Basically, it's a term archive. Uh, it's a taxonomy archive, so it applies to every term. This term is Arts Council. It's just listing everyone, every cultural org that's categorized as an Arts Council. So that's the taxonomy cultural org PHP. Uh, and then the last one is what we use for the directory page itself, and that was the page that showed you the icons, so you'd look into artist directory, and you would see, here I'll show you. If we go back to the directory, this is showing you all of the terms in the taxonomy artist. This template is done with a regular uh, WordPress page, and then we use a specialized page template to override the output. So for this particular site, we're using page 274 and page 1059. That's just because those are the IDs of the pages that we created. If you want to, you could use a slug. So there's a slug. This slug is um, directory. So you could have called this page directory.php. I thought to myself, maybe the slug will change someday and they won't tell us and then they'll call us up asking why it's broken, so I went with the ID. Uh, another thing you could do is use a custom page template. That would be one where when you're writing a page, you get a little drop down box that says which template is this. So that's slightly different. And I link to the codex uh, description of those so that you can decide for yourself what you want to do. So if we Go into these a little bit more deeply. Um, on author PHP, this is the profile page. So for example, we can take a look at one like this. Now with a thousand users, you're bound to have a few who don't fill out their profiles that much. So bear with us. So I wasn't telling the whole truth earlier when I said there are only two types of users. There are more gradations of user. Besides, within artists, they have just plain old artists who get to sign up and get a profile. And then they have artist members who, for a fee, are able to extend their profile by blogging and adding their own events and things like that. So we need to tell the difference between those so that we can decide how many fields we're going to output. Under cultural orgs, they said, well, actually, our old database is calling them affiliates. So we had an issue where we said, OK, well, we'll just include affiliates and cultural org. We'll put them together. Either way, we'll show the right fields. Okay. And then we had teaching artists, which we're not going to really get into, but we had to separate them into their own taxonomy. But essentially, they're the same as um, artist members. They just get a few extra goodies on their profile page. So the first thing we're doing in the file, and if you're following along on GitHub, this was author PHP at the top. Yeah. So right up here, we're looking at just grabbing the ID of the user that we're talking about. So you're on author PHP. You need to know, and you know who the author is. Um, and I grabbed this snippet off the web, like a million others, and it works fine. So you are, we're defining a variable as current author, basically saying, grab me the ID from this page by looking at the, the URL of the page that we're on. We can see the user ID there, so we use that to determine what ID uh, user we're looking at. And then for the rest of the page, anytime we need to pull information on the user, we have the ID, we plug that into a different uh, field. So for example, we need to put out the name, we just say echo current auth display name. So for each piece of content that's displayed, only for certain users, we're going to determine the role of the user before deciding to display it or not. So you know, 
is this person a cultural org? If so, show the cultural org mission statement. Is it an, an artist? If so, show the artist statement. So every time we do this, we just get the ID of the current user by referring back to current auth. We use get user meta and look if the user is assigned to any of the roles that display this particular content. And then if the user is so assigned, we display our content. Okay, so as an example right here, we're trying to determine if this user is a cultural org or an affiliate, which we need to show uh, some particular information right here. So display this next field only for cultural organizations. Using the, uh, we're going to define the role as plug in the author ID, get user meta, show me their capabilities. And then within that array, we have to go into, there's an array inside of an array, which will say cultural org, yes. Or maybe it says affiliate, yes. Okay, and we're looking for one of those. And as long as they're not empty and there's no error, then for each, uh, we're going to display the terms uh, that are associated with this cultural org. Is that what we're doing right here? We're showing what categories that it's in, so we're showing the terms. So this code here is outputting this right here, category literary. Okay. How do we display a list of associated terms? We use WP get object terms. Very similar to WP get post terms, except it's not as specific. We can use it for any object. While obviously WP get post terms is designed for posts. So later in the template, we want to display the user's blog posts, similar to what's always in the um, URL, excuse me, in the author PHP file. By the end of this, we display a lot of information um, and, you know, for a little bit of output, basically. But there's a, there's a lot going on on author PHP behind the scenes. Um, so for example, uh, we have a, a profile image. But then the client said, you know what would be really awesome if we had, instead of a profile image, we had a profile slider, and we could give them five images each. And we were like, oh my goodness, okay. So we'll call, <laughs> we're gonna call up a, we're gonna call up a Java query, a jQuery expert and help, get some help there, but we managed to make it work where we create custom fields. Instead of using like an avatar, we upload, um, we have them upload these images into custom fields. We output the custom fields into uh, these for each statements and then use jQuery to make a slider out of it. So that worked out pretty nicely. Sorry, scrolling is an issue. So we're doing the same technique over and over again. These fields are only for these guys. These fields are only for these guys. Um, this section here is nice because this is some native WordPress stuff. So when you create a WordPress profile, you're able to add all sorts of cool things, like all your social media links are going to be added anyway. So we can use get the author meta because WordPress already has a field for the user's Facebook link or the user's LinkedIn link or the user's Google Plus link. It's not, it's not, native. It's not native? We created this all ourselves? Oh, through the plugin. Pardon me, everybody. Pardon me. <laughs> yes. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Sorry, it's always tough showing code on the screen. But this is a way for us to show all of these different fields that, as it turns out, we added. Like I said, it's been a little while on this project. <laughs> It was a refresher for all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else did we go through? Like I said, we're repeating the same, the same technique over and over again. And if you only have, um, 
like if you only have one taxonomy for you, for your users, then maybe you won't have to make it as complicated. But it just shows you what's what's possible. Okay, so let's move on to another file, taxonomyartist.php. So this will be the same as taxonomyculturalorg.php. Um, basically, it creates the archive page for every term in artist. So if we're listing out literary artists, it's going to give me a list. All we're doing here is we're using get objects in term, which does exactly what it sounds like. We want to know all the users who are listed under literary. So what WordPress does is it says, give me all the objects, users, in the term, the category, well, the, the, the term. <laughs> Mm -hmm. literary and then it gives me all the user IDs and once you have user IDs you can do anything you want with a user ID you can pull any information from the user um, is it hard to see it's a little bit better okay okay so we get a we get a essentially a loop of user IDs. So instead of post IDs, right? You know, we're, you're with me here on the pattern. So we get that loop. We set up a for each. We display the information we want for each user. So we're using get user meta. Sometimes we use get author meta. We output the content that we want. So for our page, which is here. We're outputting a display name, a list of terms associated, uh, the about or a custom field that we created that's like a description, and then a link to view the profile. And that's it. We just do that over and over again. Uh, one of the things that we were not able to solve yet is pagination. So that's something that I'm, I'm looking for help from the audience. Uh, if you have any suggestions later, um, as we do grow this directory, it's going to become a bit unscrollable. So um, we are going to look to implement pagination when we can. It's already infinite scroll. It's just not the, the nice kind. <laughs> yeah. OK. OK, now, um, on this particular file, it does look a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. And I haven't shown the uh, code. Let me back this up a little bit, and I'll find it. So here's taxonomy artist. This right here is the, is the list of all terms that we put up here at the client's request. It's just another navigation option. When you're on a particular term archive, you can hop to the other ones. For that, we just say, get the terms in this taxonomy and roll them out in a list. We put, we're using, um, or we were using get each, right? Now you notice that we've got all this SQL stuff in here. What happened was we did it one way, but what happens is when you use um, get objects in term, there are only a couple of options for order by, either ascending or descending, and that means by user ID. So if you're showing in the in, in you know ascending user ID, meaning that like it's just, you know, when, whenever you signed up, that's going to be the order that, that they're displayed in. And it was kind of like unwieldy. So the client is asking us, obviously, these need to be displayed in terms of in, in alphabetical order by display name. And I said, yes, but you can't do that with get objects in term. Don't you know that? <laughs> and uh, we had to fall back on SQL and say, look, just pull the things that we need, order them by display name so that we can show it just how we want. So this is kind of something that we're looking for 
suggestions or advice or if if other people end up using this technique I'm sure they will end that will have more core support for doing something wild like this okay good old page 1059.php um, this is for the page uh, the main artist directory page and this is basically just a page of posts if you've ever created a page of posts, it's where you want to add a WordPress page, maybe type a title and type some content on it, but then below that content, you want to show a loop of posts. That's exactly what we're doing here, except it's a loop of users. So we're creating a page. It's ID 1059, so we're overriding its output with um, this specialized template. We allow the content of the page to come in first. So this would be the content of the cultural organizations page. And then we output uh, the list of terms. Uh, I actually need to, this is a typo. It's not a page of users. It's a page of terms. Now one of the things we did was we added taxonomy images. There's a great little plugin called taxonomy images. It allows you to do just that. You just go in, you upload an image to be associated to each term. And that's why we uh, end up with these lovely icons here. Uh, what we're outputting is the code that the um, plugin developer has asked for where I'm looking at the wrong page. Under this? Thank you. Okay. Okay, so you can see it just looks like a standard WordPress page. This part showing us the content of the page. We reset, or do we? We turn the list, uh, list of terms in artist taxonomy. So this apply filters line is from the taxonomy images plugin, where he says, OK, use this function. Just uh, choose your uh, taxonomy, and it's going to output the images. For each image, uh, create a list item that links to artist slash directory slash the term slug. View all the profiles under this term slug, output the term name, and then it shows you that image which is associated to the taxonomy term. And that's about it. You've got um, now a way to see all of your terms, click into your directories, look up your users, and have a good time on artswestchester.org. So does anyone have any questions or uh, feedback about this? Yeah. Can we see what the user creation page looks like in the back end? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it actually looks the same, except for I don't want to mess with the live site. Right. <laughs> yeah, that one's okay. Yeah. This one's all right? Yeah. Another thing that we did with this site was we, we pulled like everything onto the front end. So we have users create themselves on the front end. They create events on the front end. They blog from the front end. Is that something custom you did, or is there a plugin? We use WP no, theme, my theme My Login. That does, that's the. There's multiple, it's a set of them, but Theme My Login is the front end. I thought it was WP UF. Well, there's a couple. There's a computer. But the front end login is Theme My Login. And uh, I think that's what it is. Some of the other plugins that are on this site actually allow, like the event plugin is built as one for front end hosting. 
events manager. So okay. we had to keep in mind that most of the site was going to be a front end site. Okay, so if you look at an individual user. You can see all the different fields that we added for everybody. And so this is part of what the original class that we talked about in the beginning helps us build. When you're editing this user on the back end, you have your artist categories, your teaching artist category, and your cultural organizations category that you just add them right into. And then on the front end, it looks similar to this, but it's drop down vertical and it looks like, a, it looks like the front page of the website. Correct. You had a question? Uh, you wanted to see this? No. All right. Yeah, I'm just curious about how the backend looks. Uh, sure. Most of, most of the users self categorizing themselves so that they didn't have to go into a thousand people and right. pick themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, these are all the categories right here. I'm, some of them are less popular than others. It's really something that. No, not for this site. I, I can't think of a reason that we'd have they to scale it up that they high. They scaled it down further than their original site. Mm -hmm. They had yeah. more categories and they narrowed it down. Right, and they asked us to limit the number of categories people could add themselves to at once. So we did that with some jQuery where you can only add three categories on the checkbox. Can they register a taxonomy like you would do in a post? Like is there like a new for artist category? No, so these, yeah, uh, the question is, do these categories apply to posts? Now, can you register a new, can they register a new taxonomy like you would do typically on a post from the back end, a new category per like post type? Oh, like, yeah, how would you register a new yes, taxonomy? Well, right? No. No? I mean, technically, yes, yeah. meaning capability is there to do that. This site restricted that, that users cannot. Yeah, users add. cannot, but I, I think you mean I'm like admins. Admin. So can admins add new oh, yeah. artist categories? Yeah, so for Absolutely. under users, artist categories, this gives you the ability, just like you're used to for posts, to add um, your new taxonomy terms. And also because we've got this plugin working for us, you can add the image for each term right there. Yeah, and they're still playing with this a little bit. They're working this out. We do have some display issues where, because you can see that there's jazz and there's jazz. You know, yeah. like we all know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's because jazz, the other jazz, is a uh, is a subcategory of dance, and you know we're fooling around with how to get these uh, terms to display in a in a, something that's visually uh, clear. <laughs> but at the same time, the, the client's wondering, you know, are these going to work out in the long run? So we're just experimenting with that for now. What was the events plugin we were using? What is the events plugin we're using? We are using Events Manager. And this is uh, the free or the pro version? I think it's it's the free version. That's a great plugin too. They've been very helpful. I mean, the pro basically gets us the support more than yes, yes. I mean, which we've needed. Mm-hmm. Is it you going to see it just like you use? My account's not right Well, I know. Well, I built it. <laughs> uh, and then. 
Account details, yeah. Account details, right hand side, submit. Right, second from the bottom. So we we put this all on the front end for the user, and you can see all we've managed to do is slightly indent these. <laughs> It's better than the single list. <laughs> yeah. And that was through theme my login or was that custom? That's theme my login. Uh, so this is through theme my login. Yeah. Well, we, we yeah, we had to do the indent with some CSS. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Not auto magic, but but magic. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions? I'm just surprised that WordPress doesn't really think about the need to categorize users in this way. Right, um, so she's, she's saying she's con uh, confused why WordPress wouldn't support this out of the yeah. box. You'd think a lot of sites would have the need to do this. And that possibly a lot of sites would have the need to, to do this. I think, you know, this is the only example I can think of that you would want to do it. Like you're, you have a directory. You need some way to browse users on the front end, and so you want to organize them similar to the way you would post. I don't know. I can see how this would not get implemented um, or not be demanded uh, to be implemented. But nevertheless, there is a need for it because you can see we found all this code uh, quite easily. You know, we, we wrote very little of this stuff except for the SQL stuff, which Kevin uh, engineered later. Um, this stuff was all available. We just put it together. We, we put these things into the theme and into the plugin and made it work. So if, if other people are looking for it, I'm sure that Core will maybe find a way to roll some of this in there. Questions? Yeah. Question? Was there a question? Yeah, I started looking at but I, I didn't realize that you could attach images to taxonomies. So, so I you didn't realize you could attach images to taxonomies. Yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. Yeah, that's a good plugin. Genesis taxonomy images. Oh, does Genesis make a plugin for that too? Yeah, it's a good plugin. Great. Yeah, I think that would be really useful for people who are interested in using Genesis to create plugins for their own sites. Yeah. Like your main directory Does that give you like a shortcut or does it give you when you use the plugin? Where did I uh if you go to the directory yeah, just click, just click on your cultural menu, that's what you mean. The boss. See the, the, the layout you laid it out in the grid, so Yes. This is just a um you know what? Here I'll put it in Firefox and we can just look at it a little bit. So these are all in, I don't know how easy this is to see, but uh, it's not going to zoom on the firebug. Basically, it's just a, an unordered list, all these things. And we use CSS to make it grid-like, sort of like Genesis post grids. You know, we're just saying that it ha you know, I always forget the rules, and I have to go trial and error and I, and to get it working again. This is something that happens all the time. But it's, um, it's based on this stuff. Display as a table cell. That's one of the that's one of the rules, and I think you have to apply. This is applied to the Lee or the list item, and then to the style to the actual list. No, I guess you don't have to do anything there. It's really just about that. Yeah, it's just a CSS technique to make it um, three columns to break like that. Sure. Anyone else? Um, any yeah. recommended ways when you want to add, you know, more information to a user's profile? Than just oh, sure. So there. recommended ways to add more information to a user's profile. Um, Dana, would we use 
What did we use to add uh, all the custom fields that we wanted to our to There's users? WP Biographia. WP Biographia. Yeah. It's like, like biography. Yeah. Um, with an I at the end, yeah. And it. Uh, it gives you all the custom fields, and it gives you the author, the typical author box at the bottom of both, so you can do a couple minor design things. Right. Breaks. But was that what we used for the uh, like the Google Plus links social, and stuff like that? Links. Yeah. So that makes it very easy to add these fields and then and then pull them in your theme to display them. Right. All right. Then uh, okay. Let's wrap it up. Thanks, everybody.